Maybe I'm just lazy, but I like to think of things in terms of the essentials. You know, what is the 20% of stuff that I actually need to do in order to get 80% of the results? And considering I just crossed 3K hours over in Rocket League on my main account, I figured it'd be fitting to consolidate everything I've learned about improving and ranking up specifically when it comes to mechanics packed down into one video for you guys. So if you're ranked anything below Grand Champ, this video is for you. These are my top nine mechanics, the only essential mechanics, in my opinion, to rank up. Also, if you're wondering why I should have a say on how you should improve, fair point, but we did just cross 1,600 players over in my private coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Basically, if you don't know, the GCR is the largest live coaching program I run where we specialize in taking plat through champ ranked players up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less, or we just keep coaching you until we do. At the time I'm dropping this, we're actually reopening enrollment for our season 12 launch. So if you want that GC or even SSL title, DM me on Discord with the keyword must, and we can talk details about coaching. Links down below. Otherwise, enjoy the video, guys. Kicking off the countdown, number nine, we'll just start with the most controversial mechanic I think you should learn, speed flips. I know what you might be thinking, Luke, aren't speed flips like a nice to have mechanic? Aren't they just flashy and not really useful? Yes, I would say mostly speed flips are just a nice to have, but what I have realized over the course of playing uh, my Road to SSL series is that even up through Plat, Diamond, and Champ, their kickoffs are just not good. Across the board, kickoffs have to be one of the most inconsistent mechanics I see across the lower ranks. And so when I say you should learn speed flips, the reason I'm really saying that is because I think if you can just get a consistent speed flip kickoff, you will literally play every game with such a massive advantage on anyone below Grand Champ. Because just for whatever reason, like every game I play, people's kickoffs are not good. So that's why I say learn speed flips if you can, because they're actually just that game changing and that impactful if you can get consistent with them. I love my speed flip tutorial, which a lot of the community has seemed to like uh, that I dropped just a couple months back. I'll have that linked on screen, but you can also train using training packs and other things like that. Speed flips, they come in at the number nine spot. Number eight, half flips. Half flips should be a mechanic on this list that you probably expect. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining them, but basically, if you don't know half flips, you absolutely need to learn them. Half flips are the best way to turn around quickly. And honestly, from what I've seen, most players at the low ranks don't even have consistent half flips either. Like think to yourself, when was the last time you went for a half flip and like sort of messed it up or landed awkward and then you weren't back in time? Be honest, it's probably happened more than it should. <laughs> at least from what I've seen, half flips are still something really inconsistent at the lower ranks. And once again, they're just a fundamental that is going to improve your speed and improve your movement around the field so much will help you get out of so many dicey situations and make sure you're always last back defending your net and covering ground for your likely terrible solo queue teammate down at the lower ranks. Half flips, they should go without saying. I have tutorials for this on my channel as well. I have them linked. Definitely learn these. Number seven, fast aerials. Now, you might be surprised that I'm recommending an aerial mechanic so soon on this list uh, for ranking up, especially for the lower ranks, but I do think fast aerials are essential once you start climbing through like diamond and champ. The reason I think fast aerials are so important is because especially on defense, not even so much on offense, you can get away without knowing them on offense. On defense, sometimes the ball is just going to be falling in front of your net or be falling somewhere central where the opponents can take a shot. And if your fast aerials aren't good, if you're like still using double jump aerials or you're just consistently slow to any jump ball, you're going to find yourself getting beat a lot on your back half. And it just makes playing defense and playing the game so much harder. I'm kind of recommending fast aerials for the same reason I recommend speed flips. They shouldn't be that hard to learn. Like, yes, it's a little bit of a tricky mechanical movement, but the good news is it's 100% car control and you don't really need to be able to do anything special with the ball, like some other fancy mechanics like air dribbles and flip resets. 
Number six, I don't know if I can actually consider this a mechanic, but I'm going to put it on and it is clears. Now, what I mean by clears is specifically the ability to time the bounce on a ball. So that way you hit it as it's rising and you get like a booming clear. I think so much at the lower ranks, like you can catch people off guard, not even by putting like a good shot on net. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a screamer top corner. Literally by just putting the ball above the opponent's backboard, you can force players to become so awkward that literally you'll just get open nets. This is a little bit of a weird mention to the list, but clears like specifically timing that up bounce and just being able to boom the ball, not even with accuracy, but just with power is going to give you really, really good results against players who don't know how to respond and who panic, which is basically everybody at the lower ranks. A great way to practice clears is just using the wall ball drill over in free play, where basically you just roll the ball to you and you bang it off the wall and then let it bounce back to you and bang it back on the up bounce again and just practice hitting it back and forth. Literally just doing that for like four to five minutes will significantly improve your ability to time the ball and hit it with power. Would highly recommend you learn clears. The number five mechanic that you need to do is subscribing to anybody with the name Luke. No, okay, obviously that's a joke. Number five is actually air roll, specifically landing on four wheels. If you're below Grand Champ, right, which is what I'm mainly talking about for this video, really just the ability to land on all four wheels using regular air roll, you know, with your joystick, not even directional air roll, will have a massive impact on your speed in game. So many people still at the lower ranks, like, don't know how to land consistently. And honestly, a lot of ranking up at the lower ranks is just being in position and being back and not getting scored on breakaways. So if you can recover better, specifically like jumping off the wall, jumping off the sidewalls, jumping off your backboard, landing on four wheels and things like that. So that way you're never awkward or like fumbling around recovery wise. You're just going to be in so much better position and you're going to win more games. Number four, getting into the highest priority stuff. We're getting close to the top of the list. And number four is double jump pops. Now I know what you might be thinking, is this, is this a mechanic? Why wouldn't you include something like flicks, right? That's what most people people think honestly i don't think you need flicks to rank up really like at all okay obviously flicks are nice to have it, it would benefit you to know more okay we can agree on that but when it comes to just scoring right like one-on-one -on -one situations if you know how to just do a basic double jump pop or even better just put the ball in your car do a single jump pop fly at the goalie and bump them if you can do that you really don't need to do much else to score one-on-one -on -one situations honestly i think the better people get at Rocket League, the more they overcomplicate their goals. Like the more you think you need to do fancy stuff to score. When in reality, to score, you just need to put it around the opponent. Doesn't matter how fast the ball's going. Doesn't matter how, you know, many times you air rolled while you were taking it there. You just need to put the ball around the opponent. So putting the ball on your car and just doing a basic double jump pop is now and will probably always be one of the best ways to consistently score um, and convert one-on-ones at the low ranks. You'll score way more often and mess up way less because it's just an easy way to score. Just do it. Number three, this is what you probably came for. And this is what you're probably annoyed with me saying, if you've seen my road to SSL, bounce dribbling. It's the best mechanic to learn if you want quick rank up. And the reason I say that is not because bounce dribbling is revolutionary. Like all bounce dribbling really is, is properly timing the up bounces on the ball while hitting it at like slight angles to both get direction change and height change. That's all bounce dribbling is. But the reason it's so good is because so little people know how to do it and know how to defend it. Most players at the low ranks will give you too much space and too much time to do whatever you want with the ball. Yet most people people at the low ranks when they get the ball go for like carries and flicks where they have to, you know, use boost to take the ball down the field and the ball staying the same speed the whole time. That, that, that's not the best thing you can do if you get space. I always recommend you make your first touch on an angle and you start bounce dribbling. The reason bounce dribbling is so good is because you can get those direction changes, you can get those height changes, and you can get it at basically any point while you're watching the opponent, which is so much more potent than just a flick that can usually only beat one defender. So seriously, practice bounce dribbling, do my hot potato drill, it'll, it'll change your gameplay. Number two, and this is probably the most 
underrated of any of the mechanics on the list. That is backwards saves. From what I've seen, like coaching players and just watching gameplay at the lower ranks, everybody practices the mechanics that help them on offense, right? Everybody wants to learn the scoring mechanics. Everybody wants to learn the air dribbles, the flip resets. But for whatever reason, nobody wants to practice like the basic defensive maneuvers. And you would be amazed at how many people make it all the way through champ and like don't know how to drive backwards. It's probably you watching. If you're watching this, you probably know what I'm saying. Like most people, People aren't confident driving backwards, yet they can do an air dribble double tap like it's nothing. Once again, if you want to rank up fast, this is one of the easiest ways to do it. I'll have merch, uh, my editor help me with some uh, training packs on screen. I also have a list of some of my favorite training packs for stuff like this that I just give away for free over in my free Discord. It's just called the Training Club. Anyway, shameless plug over. Um, backward saves, they are so easy to train. And if you just put like five minutes into a basic training pack or you do a drill I recommend where you use your right D pad to shoot the ball at you while you're driving back at the net, you will be able to defend like 95% of people. So learn these. There's a reason they're number two. And then finally, the number one must learn mechanic to rank up. In my opinion, you probably saw this coming power slide cuts. Yes, this kind of goes in line with bounce dribbling, but I would say it's one level above. The reason power slide cuts are so good is not just because they get a direction change on the ball, right? Getting a direction change and being able to beat one defender is great. Not only that, but the thing about power slide cuts that you got to think about is they don't commit you when you go for the mechanic, right? Like when you cut that ball in, you can immediately follow it up and play it past the second defender, right? So you can outplay multiple defenders with just cuts in and out. Not only that, but you could just completely fold and go play defense if the opponent ends up picking up the ball after you do a cut. Or if none of that works at any point while you're doing a power side cut, you could just stop and go for a low 50-50 and punish somebody who's early challenging you. Unlike a carry where you're committed to a carry, dribbling on angles and going for power slide cuts, it's such a low risk, high reward way to outplay opponents. And once again, people just don't know how to defend this stuff because everybody's going for the flicks and everybody's going for the carries. So if you can learn this once again, by practicing the, the same drills I recommended for bounce dribbling and even just like driving around in free play and practicing doing 180s around the ball, practicing turning the ball 90 degrees, things like that, man, your gameplay, it's going to level up so significantly. You will be able to outplay players even through grand champ with basically no effort so my number one mechanic seriously if you want to rank up fast learn power side cuts and uh it, you'll be set Okay, those were my must learn mechanics, my top nine list, if you will. There are a lot of mechanics I couldn't include in this list, right? There are things like flicks, which I think are important that I didn't include. Joystick air roll. I've been preaching directional air roll. I think directional air roll is really important. Wave dashes, air roll shots, air dribbles, flip resets, backboard defense, wall play. These are just like some of the things I wrote down that I think are like tier two, like very important as well. But otherwise, if you wanna see more content like this when it goes live and you wanna see like examples of me using this stuff and like clips I post from my games. Go check out my Instagram because I post a ton of stuff there before I even post it on YouTube. It's just one word. It's Spook Luke Graham. I'll have that link down in the description below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, guys. I, it's incredible to have all the support. We just passed 229k subs. I got this tracker thing. Oh, there we go. Okay. I can just barely get in the bottom of it. I just got this tracker thing that tracks my subs and it is like genuinely so insane. Like all the people who are subscribed. Thank you so much. Like it, it's honestly incredible doing this stuff is it genuinely makes me so happy. So thank you all so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. Peace guys.